Fantastic Four, ISO 8s. There's thing. Anyway, what's up, guys? Uh, so, this is, again, another team. More characters than there are to do with. And we're not going to address the elephant in the room. Because it's funny. So, starting off, we have Thing. Thing hits real hard. Uh, Thing gets damage. That's it. As we've said before, characters that uh, hit multiple times tend to be better with Raider. That, which is absolutely true. Um, Raider doesn't necessarily do anything from its clobbering time, but damage does. Thing also has a pretty solid damage stat at, like, this investment. So just imagine what happens if you cared about him. Uh, Thing is a damage dealer. Thing has a very high damage stat. 5% on a very high damage stat is worth more than it would be on a low damage stat, clearly. And because he's hitting frequently and that damage stat goes up as things like his counterattacks and his assists happen, damage, right? He's a brawler. Most brawlers get damage. It makes sense. Okay. Really nothing else to talk about. He has a decent health pool, so you could throw healer on him, but there's better characters as far as this team is concerned to get healer. Um, but he's a decent option on that team. Uh, and you're probably using him on most versions of the team anyway. Not a big deal. Moving to Mr. Fantastic. Uh, it's Skirmisher. A lot of it's the focus. So Skirmisher 5 is really where he stands out. But he's constantly hitting people. Um, again, a good mix of Skirmisher on a team that's constantly assisting or throwing out assists is relevant. So anytime he will assist, he might put on that vulnerable. Relative, but reasonable. Uh, he gets a little bit value from clearing defense up. Obviously, he gets some extra focus for this attack, but that doesn't matter. Uh, Entangle is really where the the focus matters, but even at that point, you want to have the you know max investment in it. Uh, and then for science, the ability to just rip buffs off, really, really. So skirmisher five is really important on him, but it's not like he gets better. It's not like if you don't have skirmisher five, there's a better option. Technically, he does multi-hit with his basic, so raider could be an option on him. It's probably going to be Skirmisher. Um, that's it. Healer doesn't work. He doesn't have great health pool. He's not super squishy, though. Like, he he's okay as far as damage is concerned, so you don't have to, like, protect him. Although I understand maybe low investment ones could take it. That's pretty much it. Uh, Namor gets crit because of this line of text, and we never talk anything else about it. Two of Namor's attacks attack multiple people. Uh, his special and his ultimate in war this attack always crits is unavoidable cannot be countered removes buffs does that like just put crit on it like if the attack always crits get everything have vulnerable like it makes sense just raider right come on sometimes you don't gotta do it. there are other options skirmishers fine um he doesn't have a health pool for healer. Uh, he has a decent health pool, surprisingly, actually. It's not bad. Uh, healer's okay on him. I guess Skirmisher is also reasonable on him, but, like... I really haven't noticed much of an issue. Um, it, with his focus. If you have, maybe Skirmisher goes up a little bit more. But I think Raider is just pretty obviously where you want to go. Um, next, we have Human Torch. Now, uh, I don't want you to be confused. Just because you don't have a 7 Red Star Human Torch doesn't mean this is not the correct choice for him. He is another high damage dealer-like thing. He has a very high damage stat. Increasing his damage stat uh, is relevant. So... Multipliers are high. Offense up is high. Like, he doesn't do anything that would be fun or exciting with any other buff. I will hear a strong argument for Fortifier because, uh, as we all know, he has one hit point. Uh, and he only loans it from Rocket Raccoon. So, it could just go at any minute. And you really don't want to run that risk. I get it. I think it's totally reasonable to put a lot of stuff on him um, to keep him alive. But I do think that damage is what he wants to do. If he was going to survive it but not do damage, then he did nothing anyway. I like damage on him. I think that's what the team wants to do. Um, put specifically Striker on him. And getting extra attacks in, doing extra damage. 
Uh, now we have Invisible Woman. Uh, there is absolutely, positively no reason to put Fortifier on her. She shields herself a ton. She shields other people a ton. Uh, just because she has shields doesn't mean you need to take the ability that has shields. Does it work? Yes, it does. You know what works a lot better? Healer. Because she has a stupid health pool. So the more her he the more you're throwing out heals from her giant health pool, the better off most characters are. Whether it be, you know, after you've hidden them and threw a, a heal out and a regen on somebody, um, or the turn after that when she comes back around and throws another heal out, it's reasonable. She doesn't do none of her attacks hit people. Although I will make an argument, a really strong argument for skirmisher, uh, this would trigger for skirmisher. This uh, will trigger for skirmisher. Um, this will trigger for Skirmisher. So, whoever she's targeting when she does either of those abilities will put a Skirmisher on it. Is reasonable, sure, um, not the best or worst. Really depends on where they are in the thing. I like Healer on her. It's been really good, especially outside of the team, but even within the team, the team does need a little bit of sustain. Uh, this provides a little bit more sustain than her normal kit does and is reasonable. And last but not least, we have She-Hulk. Uh, I haven't even touched her. I have no intention of touching her. As a matter of fact, uh, I will not unlock her until the day I unlock Doctor Doom. So, got that going for me. That said, I've seen and fought enough She-Hulks and talked with enough people to know that, uh, depending on her investment compared to the rest of the team, Fortifier is a reasonable investment on her. She's surprisingly squishier than you would think she would be. Uh, Skirmisher is a very reasonable uh, investment on her because of how she works with characters on defense. I don't like Raider at all because the, her counterattack critting doesn't do anything and she really doesn't hit multi-hit that often. And I really don't like uh, damage on her because, again, she's not there for the damage. I like Skirmisher on her. Healer is a reasonable option on her um, to keep everyone alive. She has a decent health pool, but not great. Uh, I really just like uh, Skirmisher or Fortifier to keep her alive because that's her purpose. Her purpose is to be uh, almost unstoppable on defense, and that's where you get the value. As of right now, whenever I'm fighting one, if she's easy to kill, the entire team folds like paper. If she becomes more difficult to kill, uh, her reflexive taunt or how she taunts when uh, other characters take actions, like Reed... Uh, really can be the difference maker, especially if her or somebody else is healing her as it goes on. So that's the entire setup for the Fantastic Four. Uh, hopefully uh, you understood why I made the decisions I made and hope it's really not that difficult team. Team's great on offense, team's okay on defense, but is what it is. Anyway, uh, comment below and let me know what you do if anything's different. You can tell me about She-Hulk too. Tell me about your She-Hulk. Make fun of me for not investing. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.